Hey, this is Tesla News Tonight here. I have some news from an article I read by MSN titled Tesla, Ford, and Kia Among 120,000 Vehicles Recalled. So, here we go. We had a recall from Kia uh, where you must go to the dealer. It's for 22,768 cars. Chrysler has uh, two different vehicles. Uh, for one of them, you must go to the dealer, 2,628 vehicles worth. And the other Chrysler recall, you have to contact service, and that is for 2,032 cars. Uh, Ford has three, and GM, uh, GM has four. So from Ford, uh, all three must go to dealer. Uh, you have one Ford recall for 34,762. Uh, let's see, for another Ford, you have to go to the dealer, 931 recalls, and another Ford, we have to go to the dealer, 2,866 vehicles. Now, uh, here are GM's three. Uh, for all three, you must go to the dealer, and uh, let's see, it's a total of 42, uh, you have 25, 8, and 9 vehicles that must go to dealer uh, for GM recalls. Now, let's see, for Toyota... Uh, it, it was actually 13 instances where you must actually, uh, they will mail the sticker. It's just, it's actually just a, like a tire tag or something like that. Uh, you, you actually have to contact them and they will mail the sticker, but just make sure you contact service first. Uh, otherwise you'll have the incorrect sticker and in case you're loading anything uh, that could mess you up, you could have uh, the wrong information there. And then that last uh, GM recall, you must also go to the dealer, and that's for 62 additional vehicles. Uh, let's see here. Now for Tesla, uh, I don't remember how many vehicles it was, but uh, according to what I read upon uh, further uh, research from NHTSA, and Tesla's reporting actually to NHTSA, it seems like on September 27th, uh, they knew this was an issue and uh, then it was corrected on September 28th and by the end of September 28th Tesla was already working on uh, uh, confirming the recall if you want to even call it that so I'll explain a little bit further here uh, so Tesla had already taken care uh, of this recall with a regularly scheduled over-the-air update uh, notes will be sent to Tesla stores and service centers will also be notified by by now, uh, by October 13th, actually. So it's already kind of a moot point. It's already done and over with. And uh, all of the stores and uh, service centers from Tesla that are going to be getting this notification, the over-the-air update has already taken care of it. Here's another piece of news here. Well, I mean, I, I at least I could say that I called it already uh, as far as saying Emo Musk. If uh, you didn't understand what I said or if you didn't come across your humble narrator, Tesla News Tonight, already calling Elon Musk Emo Musk because of that uh, quarter three 2023 Tesla earnings call. <laughs> and of course, uh, one of the biggest haters of Tesla, Te uh, Business Insider, reports... Elon Musk acted like a little baby and was almost in tears on Tesla's terrible earnings call, analyst says. Uh, I, I didn't even want to get into <laughs> I didn't even want to get into that article. Um, I'm gonna just read it later, but I just wanted to kind of tear into some of the FUD now <laughs> because it's just so ridiculous actually. So, you know, um I, I talked about this uh at least on a Spotify podcast, I might have talked about it on Substack. And uh, if I haven't hit it on YouTube before, I'm hitting it now. <laughs> uh, I, I, I coined that Emo Musk because uh, he was a very passionate, hardworking, tired man. And uh, he was, you know, really trying to uh, make the point that, you know, the macroeconomic situation is serious. N not only now, but always, right? You should always be taking that kind of stuff seriously and also being that Cybertruck is right around the corner November 30th will be the um, release date 
launch, delivery event, whatever uh, it actually is going to be, uh, and, and what we'll see on that day, hopefully will be a lot, we'll see. But I wanted to get into this article from Business Insider because Business Insider is one of the, the biggest anti-Tesla heels in the biz. Uh, and like I said, uh, the little quotes that they have, I guess, from their analyst uh, saying that Elon Musk was acting like a, quote, little baby, end quote, and was, quote, almost in tears, end quote, on Tesla's, quote, terrible, end quote, earnings call. <laughs> oh man, so just a plethora of negativity <laughs> from Business Insider, but I guess I wouldn't really expect much else from them. Uh, I have been seeing a lot of doom and gloom from them, so, you know, I mean, in other articles, I should say, uh, from Business Insider, they were covering doom and gloom, so I guess what I'll do is I'll read into this one about the uh, Q3 Tesla uh, earnings call, and then I'll read about some of their doom and gloom and, you know, s see what kind of lines up on their side. But to me, as far as I can tell, uh, it's FUD so far, and it's hardcore FUD, honestly. And I'm going to be actually going over a video, so if you can uh, beat me to it, here it is. It's uh, WDAF-TV, Kansas City. So I'm going to check this video out. I haven't got to yet. Toyota to adopt Tesla EV charging system. Toyota to adopt Tesla EV charging system. Uh, it isn't really news or anything like that, but it is a news video uh, by a news outlet out of Kansas City. And being that it's Kansas City, I wanted to give that a check. So uh, just kind of funny, you know, just kind of fun rolling around. It wasn't just that, you know, when I... Uh, was searching and scrolling a lot of the mainstream uh, media news headlines. It was like Tesla and Ford are telling you how, you know, the woes of electric vehicles and, you know, only half of people uh, are going to purchase a next EV, you know, th that have owned one. And that's obviously just all of the alternative uh, electric vehicle brands weighing down uh, Tesla because then there was another article, I uh, can't remember by who, that uh, I started reading into, I just had to stop actually, that was saying, you know, oh, Tesla uh, vehicle owners have brand loyalty. And there's no brand loyalty for Tesla at all. I'm not loyal to Elon Musk. I'm not loyal to Tesla. I don't even own a Tesla. Uh, that doesn't mean that I don't want to. But I'm not loyal to Tesla either because... I have no reason to be. I shouldn't be. I just want to have the best vehicle that I can have at the best price I can get it. And that's basically what everyone should be thinking. Uh, you know, I think brand loyalty uh, won't necessarily become a thing of the past. But I just think that more and more people uh, that that talk even about brand loyalty will probably not even utter that kind of a statement or that kind of a phrase anymore. So uh, what do you think about Business Insider? You think that's just FUD? Uh, what do you think about me calling Emo Musk? That was my whole point of, of coining that uh, new name for Elon, Emo Musk. Uh, I mean, it's any emotion, you know, that fits, uh, <laughs> that fits what Tesla's trying to do. You know, I said bravo to Elon, to Emo Musk. I thought that was a great performance by Elon. Let me just read that headline again. Elon Musk acted like a little baby and was almost in tears on Tesla's terrible earnings call, analyst say. Uh, analyst says. I'm sorry. They love that. They love throwing those around too. They make they make sure that they have they find somebody familiar with the situation an analyst or an expert. <laughs> so there was some kind of over the air update. I don't uh I didn't see when this MSN article even came out. I think it was new for them to release this, but it's funny because Tesla's already taken care of this almost a month ago, almost immediately, of course. So it's just kind of funny when I read over the chronological timeline of of how Tesla dealt with this, it was like 
the you know it was just taken care of right away over the air update and every other uh, vehicle either needs to either must go to the dealer to get this corrected because it's like a part or something or they at least have to contact service so you have um, 2032 vehicles from Chrysler they have to contact service about and you have 13 vehicles from Toyota uh, that you have to contact service over each and every other one from GM 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 Ford 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 Chrysler and Kia for you know a total of uh, you know almost a hundred thousand different vehicles they all must be returned to the dealer to be dealt with they cannot be done over the air that is an innovation that is Tesla's so actually uh, <laughs> that's something to look into uh, I guess if maybe purchasing a Tesla or something like that it's actually a uh, you know, a buying point. Uh, it's a pro on the list of pros and cons. Being able to get a, an over-the-air software update uh, to get your um, whatever it was like a coolant uh, or a, a brake fluid light to indicate, then that's it. It's an over-the-air update and bing, bang, boom, you're done. So this is Tesla News Tonight. I hope you appreciated this little bit of a FUD buster here, a uh, little bit of a FUD buster video where I just kind of bust into and tear open and kind of kill some of the fear, uncertainty, and doubt that is always aimed with that hair trigger at you-know-who, Tesla. And I don't quite know why. Maybe it's because they're not playing any uh, reindeer games. They're not, you know, basically, they're not advertising with all the other big wigs that are in control, telling the narrative and all that sort of stuff. And then uh, if you get to check out that Toyota to adopt Tesla EV charging system video out of Kansas City, let me know. I'll be checking that out as well. This is Tesla News Tonight. I wish you all peace, love, and prosperity. Thanks again for checking me out. I'll be back. Later.